In this video I'll be showing my approach to photographing fungi using either the Olympus EM1 Mark III or the EM1 Mark II. Most of the pictures are taken using the 60mm f2.8 macro lens, although some will be taken using the 40 to 150 f2.8 combined with the MC14 converter. The habitat shots where I'm showing wide angle views of the fungi in the woodland are taken using either the 12 to 40 mm f2.8 Pro or the 9 to 18 mm f4 to 5.6 wide angle zoom. Autumn is a great time for general photography. The green chlorophyll in the leaves of a trees disappears to be replaced by lovely golden yellows, reds and browns. Late September through October and early November is the prime time for fungi photography and most people can find local woods which should provide plenty of subject matter. When wandering through a woodland looking for fungi it pays dividends to be very selective. Only photograph specimens that are in pristine condition. Photographing fungi is relatively easy compared to other areas of natural history photography like birds or insects. They're not going to fly away or move, so subject movement is not a problem. Having said that, they do pose their own problems photographically. Lighting for photographing fungi makes quite a bit of difference to the resultant pictures. More often than not, dull or soft overcast lighting produces the best results. Fungi can be particularly difficult to photograph in bright sunny conditions, when high contrast can be a problem. Some of my best fungi shots have been taken on dull days when it's been raining. Rain is not an issue with Olympus equipment because the weather sealing on both the camera bodies and the lenses are excellent. If you can find fungi that are out in the open where the lighting is reasonable, photographing fungi handheld is not a problem. With the image stabilising on Olympus cameras being so good, I have taken shots using the 60mm macro as low as half a second and still achieved pin sharp images. When photographing fungi in areas of woodland where they are in the shade, shutter speeds can be quite low. 8 or 10 second exposures are not uncommon. You have two options, you can either increase the ISO or use a tripod. Upping the ISO tends to increase digital noise, so my preferred option is to use a tripod to enable me to keep the ISO to 400 or lower. Although using a tripod means you have extra gear to carry around, there are lots of advantages to using a tripod. The main one is that long shutter speeds cease to be a problem. I find using a tripod gives me a more considered approach when framing the subject. You will also find it easier to look in the viewfinder for distractions that can be gardened to improve the picture. Most modern lightweight carbon fibre tripods are relatively light and easy to carry around all day. The important thing when choosing a tripod for fungi photography is it will enable you to get down low to ground level viewpoint. I use a Benro, which is a short stubby central column. And when the legs are sprayed out, it will allow me to photograph from about 4 inches off the ground. Another option is to use a bean bag, and I often use this option if I do not want to lug a tripod around all day. One advantage of Olympus cameras is a flip out articulated screen. This is particularly helpful when photographing wide angle habitat shots. If you normally look through the viewfinder, you will have to lay down on the ground, which is not always ideal when the ground is wet and muddy. Also, if like me, you struggle getting up and down, the fact that you can flip the screen out to the side and tilt it to 45 degree angle is a great advantage. It means you can kneel down rather than having to lie down to take the picture. In this image, I found an attractive grouping of fungi. There were three of them, and they're all in good condition as well as being at different heights, which helps the composition. When I first found them, they looked quite promising, 
but they would certainly need a bit of gardening to remove some leaves, twigs and other small distractions that were spoiling the composition. There was also an area just in front that was devoid of moss, so I pulled a bit of moss off another nearby log and used this to patch this bald area. With careful manual focusing and shooting at f8, I could achieve front to back sharpness in one shot, so there's no need to use focus stacking. I do find that often you can improve a shot by boosting the light on the stems of fungi by using a small LED torch. There are other, other ways of doing this. You can use some form of reflector or fill in flash, but I have found the LED torch method the easiest to use. The advantage is that you see in real terms exactly where the light is going, as well as its strength. One advantage of Micro Four Thirds cameras is the extra depth of field that you can obtain. If you shoot at f8 on the Olympus, you are effectively getting the same depth of field that you would obtain at f16 on a full frame camera. Why some people will say that this is one of the disadvantages of Micro Four Third cameras I have found it to be a big advantage for the vast majority of subjects that I photograph. Although this extra depth of field is an advantage, there are times when even still it is difficult to obtain front to back sharpness in one exposure. This is a particular problem when you have a number of fungi grouped together. In these situations I will often use in-camera focus stacking to obtain extended sharpness throughout the image. I have covered how to set the Mark III up for focus stacking in a previous YouTube video on how to use focus stacking on Olympus EA1 Mark III. I will put a link to this video in the description. Backgrounds are something that is very important to take into consideration when photographing fungi. Behind this group of Mycena inclinata was an area of dead bracken which produced a very messy and distracting background. To get around this problem I looked around for an old log and positioned it between the fungi and the bramble. Because the log was quite dark it helped to make the stems and the caps of the fungi stand out. You will often find that a lot of fungi can be found growing on or around fallen logs or trees. These bracket fungus can look particularly attractive when the tree stump or log they are growing on is covered in moss or lichens. One advantage of photographing bracket fungi is that because they are slightly off the ground you will find it easier to separate the subject from the background and help to achieve a soft diffused out of focus backdrop. Photographing fungi from a low viewpoint will also help to achieve this out of focus background if you use the 40 to 150 plus the 1.4 converter. Using the longer focal length lens will help to achieve a narrower depth of field which will help to blur the background nicely. Sometimes photographing fungi can be a bit like photographing still life. In a studio you arrange a subject, you're constantly looking through the viewfinder and re-evaluating the setup until it is perfect. Only then do you press the shut button. The same approach can be used for fungi. With these earth ball fungi, they initially did look quite attractive, but the background was very messy. I carefully removed the grasses growing up between them, and then spent about five minutes collecting some small autumn coloured leaves, which I arranged around them. Whilst this is never going to be a prize winning image, it's a big improvement on how I originally found them. When you find a group of fungi where the woodland background is particularly attractive, it helps to consider using a wide angle habitat shot. For this, I will either use the 12 to 40mm f2.8 lens, or if I want an even wider view to include more of the woodland, the 9 to 18mm f4 to 5.6 lens. The advantage of both of these lenses is that they will enable you to close focus to within a couple of inches of the subject. Often using a bean bag in this situation is a better option than using a tripod. 
Fungi are a very rewarding subject to photograph in the autumn, and I always look forward to this time of year. It's a very pleasant way to spend a morning or afternoon wandering around one of your local woods looking for interesting specimens. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Please check out some of my other YouTube videos, as well as my website, and thanks for watching.